All right, so as you guys know, I'm pretty late to the game and when it comes to the app directory and React server components, but I've just been kind of experimenting with stuff. And I want to kind of share the things that I've learned with you all, and hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about Next and React. So a little example that I'm trying to do here um, is I have a page that has like a user profile, and I just added this aside element over here to kind of pretend like this is a blog post and you have like your most popular blog post articles on the right. Let me kind of show you how this is set up. When this page loads, you'll see that it says profile info loading, and that takes about two seconds because I have like a fake timer in here. But basically, it's taking a lot of time to load this component over here on the right because of whatever reason. Maybe the database you're using is a little bit slower. And you don't want the entire page to basically be stuck trying to load information because of one little component, okay? So looking at the code, how does this page actually get rendered? So when the profile page is first ran, you see here I'm in profile page, I'm basically grabbing the most popular links here. This is like an API request. It takes about two seconds to resolve a array of strings, okay? And then we also just render those links out here. As you can see, we do a links.map. We render out some links and uh, that's about it. So a cool thing you could potentially do with React server components is you can actually have this component encapsulate and couple the, the loading of the data and the rendering of the data itself, right? So instead, if I were to take this, this fetch out and I move it directly up here, which I already have, I have a component up here, which is an async component. And this does the actual request for the data here directly inside the component, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and basically delete this code. And this should be doing the exact same thing. It's basically fetching data. It is displaying it. And then that's about it. So if we refresh the page again, notice that it still takes about two seconds for this profile information to load, which, which kind of sucks, right? We don't like this thing. We should be able to display, even though like the fetch request is really just trying to get this data over here. So this is where the cool thing about react server components kind of comes in is that if you actually wrap this thing in a suspense like this, your page will actually load now. Like you notice the entire page loads and now it just waits for two seconds for this side element to be populated with the data. And you might have seen there is still a loader there. Um, in Next.js, if you create a loading.tsx file here, basically it's going to look at your layout and as it's loading the information for the child of your layout, so if I go up a level to layout here, you see here I'm rendering out children. So behind the scenes, Next is kind of wrapping this in a suspense as well, and it's using the default loader of whatever you know the child is. So in this case, this is a profile route, so it's going to load in this profile page and put it as the child, but it kind of wraps that with, with a suspense and a fallback with this. So I know that's, that might have been kind of confusing, um, but it's basically just doing this, right? It's doing this, but it's giving a fallback of like, we are loading some data. In fact, it actually takes the component that's in here and it puts it in the fallback of the suspense. So now that I added a manual fallback here on the most popular links, you will see that when I refresh the page, it says we are loading some data and then it actually displays the data for us. Now, I do believe this is called streaming. So this, this component here is actually being streamed over from the back end, and the app is not fully done running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out the network tab, and then I'm going to refresh the page. And notice that it, it's going to load some data, and then after two seconds, it loads some additional data, right? So these are kind of streamed in, and then React is going to populate them on the page for us behind the scenes. So this kind of gives us the ability to be more performant in terms of just loading elements on the page quickly, and then more computational heavy or slower things to load can be kind of like asynchronously loaded. Now there are some caveats to this. I think you can't use like use state and use effect inside of these components, um, which kind of makes me wonder like, what is the point of this? Like most things that we display in the page, you need some type of like interactivity. And I don't think you can use the async await with client components. So it kind of like wonders like, what what is the purpose of doing this when eventually you're probably going to add some custom functionality to like this. Imagine this had some type of like, I don't know, slider or some navigation in it. You can't do that with the React server components. So 
I don't know. Leave a comment if you guys kind of know what the purpose of this. It seems cool and it seems like you can really build like isolated components and just inject them in, with suspenses all of your application. But realistically, I can't think of some good use cases of like why you'd even want to do this because if you're building out interactive apps, you want to use client components at the end of the day, right? But I guess one use case is you just want to load in some ads like on the side and you don't want those ads to kind of block the entire rendering of the page. You can do that, but I don't know. I need to do more research on it and convince myself this is actually useful because right now I'm just not understanding it. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Feel free to call me out if I said anything wrong. And uh, also, please enlighten me if you can find some really good reasons as to why you'd use this uh, in your applications. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel you're welcome to join where you can ask questions if you're stuck with learning how to code or just find a place to hang out with some other developers. Cool. Have a good day and happy coding.